Inspector Lestrade. At once. Your name, sir? Dr. John Watson. Is he expecting you, sir? In a way, I believe he is. Well, I'll tell him you're here, sir. Dr. Watson, I didn't expect to have the pleasure of seeing you again so soon. Will you kindly read that? Uh, what is it? Read it. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh. I think it's disgraceful, sir. Absolutely disgraceful. What? Yes, and I'm glad you are here so that I can tell it to you personally. Why, you and I both know that it was Sherlock Holmes who solved the Cunningham case. If it wasn't for his brilliance and his persistency, the fact would never have been brought to light. And I think it's scandalous, sir, that the newspaper should have given me all the credit and said so very little about his magnificent achievement. What do you think, Doctor? Hmm? I, I, well, I absolutely agree with you. Eh? I'm glad you're on my side, Doctor. Why, of course, I'm so glad you take it that way. Well, what does Holmes think? Oh, he doesn't mind, you know. He doesn't care who gets the credit. <laughs> oh, dear old Holmes. Such a modest fellow. Yes, well, I'll... look, you must give him my kind regards. Yes. And tell him that, although I know he doesn't think anything about it, I intend to get the newspapers to get the facts straight. Well, that's very good of you, Inspector. Well, what's Holmes doing these days? Well, the last time I saw him, he was playing about with a lot of ink smudges and talking about, um, the prince that fingers make. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Holmes. Always experimenting. <laughs> Inspector Lestrade, sir. Yes, what is it? There's been a murder reported at the home of Lord Beryl. What? Lord Beryl of the Foreign Office? That's him, sir. Uh, I'll be right with you. Excuse me, Doctor. Yes, of course. Lord Beryl. This is going to be a tricky situation to handle. What with the Foreign Office and who knows what else? Yes, indeed. Can I be of any assistance? No, I don't think so, Doctor. Oh, well, perhaps as a medical man, mind you, I don't know what to expect, but I think you would be of invaluable assistance. Say no more. Here's the address, sir. Your carriage is waiting outside. Oh, thank you very much. Perhaps you'd care to acquaint Sherlock Holmes and what has happened. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know myself what's happened. As you said, the people involved make this case rather delicate. Perhaps a little suggestion now and then might help facilitate matters. One never knows. Yes, you're so right. Take a message to Mr. Sherlock Holmes of 221 Baker Street. 221B. Yes, of course, 221B Baker Street. Tell him what has happened and drive him to Lord Burr's residence. Yes, sir. And tell him Dr. John Watson is already there. The flat's the first floor up. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. murder committed at the home of Lord Beryl. Inspector Lestrade and Dr. Watson have already gone there. Thank you. Would you uh, care to have some tea? Some tea, sir? Yes. Is that what you're making? Oh, come along. Come and have a look at this. I'm working on an extract from a special series of, of pygmy poisons. Oh, very interesting, sir. Uh, tea? Well, yes, I don't mind if I do. Take milk. Yes, sir, please, sir, if I may. Splendid. Sugar? Thank you, sir. Uh, where did I put that sugar? Ah, ah there it is. It's very right. Help yourself. Thank you, sir. So. What's this you're doing here, sir? Well, I believe that certain poisons, if taken in the correct doses, can actually have beneficial rather than fatal effects. Now, that's very interesting, sir. Yes, it is, isn't it? Well, what's all this over here, sir? All oh, that? Oh, those are some tropical leaves. Uh, they were sent to me by a friend of mine who hunts in that part of the country. The essence, you see, passes through this tube, down here and across the table, and is condensed in that retort there. 
And what's that stuff in the bottom there? That's lime. That acts as a catalytic agent to, to combine the essence of the leaves with a dark, tar-like substance, which you can see at the bottom. Inspector Lestrade, I demand to see my wife. You've kept me waiting half an hour, and now I should like an explanation. Of course, you're entitled to one, sir. You know that Karl Oberstein was murdered in your study. I was informed of that, and it is a tragedy, of course. But I still don't see that that is... Lord Bell, your wife has confessed to shooting him. What? That's why I couldn't allow you to see her. We were taking her statement. What does she say? Apart from the actual confession of murder, she refuses to say anything. You may go in now, if you wish, Lord Bell. What's that you're putting in now, sir? Well, it's a form of acid dye. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, where have you two been all the afternoon? Didn't the sergeant tell you? Oh, yes, I remember. It was a murder somewhere. Was it interesting? No, Mr. Dewey. Uh-huh. Well, Mr. Dewey, come and have a whiskey and soda. Whiskey and soda, Mr. Dewey. No, I'll be off duty in um, five minutes. Yes, I think that'd be all right. Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> Neat for me. Well, um, sit down if you can find yourself a place. There you go. Yes, well, I think we can leave that to boil for a little while now. Now, gentlemen, what's the problem? Who was murdered? A man named Karl Oberstein. Oberstein? Oberstein. Oh, yes, I remember. An Austrian chap. Mm, he was originally, but, of course, for a number of years, he's been a freelance agent. Mm-hmm. Buying and selling anything he get his hands on, eh? But his hands on a bit too much this time. Lady Burl shot him. Holt Smith, 38. Oh, really? It was a nasty bit, then. I examined the body before it was removed. Entire back of the head gone. Instantaneous death, of course. Did you find the bullet? No, the police sergeant will do that. It hadn't come out. Yes, and that shot in the back of the head removes any possible chance Lady Bell may have had of claiming self-defense. You're off duty now, aren't you, Wilkins? Yes, sir. You may go home. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure working for you this afternoon, Mr. Holmes. I'd like to know how it all turns out. I'll let you know. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I feel sorry for Lord Bell. There'll be quite a scandal when this appears in the papers. Yes, there certainly will be. I wonder why Lady Beryl lied to you. What nationality was Lady Beryl originally? Well, um, she was born in Austria, although she was brought up in America. She's been here in England for the past five years since her marriage, you know. It's a shame a woman like her has to remain in prison. Still, she might decide to tell you... What did you say? I beg your pardon. What did you say just now? I didn't say anything. Oh, yes, you did. You said, I wonder why Lady Beryl lied to you. <laughs> oh, that. Yes, what did you mean? Nothing, except, of course, that Lady Beryl didn't shoot this chap Oberstein at all. But, but, but she confessed to it. Nonsense. She didn't shoot Oberstein because Oberstein wasn't shot. His head was bashed in with a blunt instrument. The revolver you claim was the murder weapon actually belonged to Oberstein. She found it lying by his side and pretended she'd done it in order to shield her husband. She's no more guilty than you two are. Now, would you hold that like a good fellow, please? Mm. Would you please repeat that? Of course, it's as plain as a... Here, would you mind holding that? Oh, well, it's not plain to me. Well, you told me that Lady Beryl confessed to shooting Oberstein. But Oberstein wasn't shot. Just because you find a man with the back of his head shattered and a gun lying by his side is no reason to assume he's been shot. 
Thank you. You also assumed that the bullet had lodged in Oberstein's cranium because it hadn't emerged through the front. Now, any student of elementary ballistics knows that the greatest damage to the skull is on the opposite side to which the bullet entered. The point of entry is always clean. But the gun we found was an Austrian gun, and, and Lady Bell is an Austrian. Now, there's a logical bit of reasoning for you. Would you mind holding that, please? Lady Bell saw Oberstein lying there and jumped to the same conclusion we did. Well, Lady Bell's innocent. Then somebody else is guilty. Brilliant. We've got to get back to the premises and re-examine them for clues. You come with us, Holmes. This nonsense can wait. Nonsense? Nonsense. Nonsense? Did you say nonsense? I'll have you know, Inspector Lestrade, that if the law enforcement agencies of this country were a little, uh, an infinitesimal amount more advanced than ancient Neolithic man, I would not have to be doing the basic research work that will in time benefit police bureaus throughout the earth. You may have a point, Mr. Holmes. A uh, point? The only point is, the only point is human, of which there is a paucity in the halls of our defense of the public. So do you really think I certainly do think, but I'll tell you a few other things. And now we return to the case of Lady Beryl. Yes, it's to be dependent ninety percent on a good memory. Details are straight. Those are the things. Well, she's in here. And Normally, I'd detain her for confessing to a crime she didn't commit, but... Well, what with the Foreign Office and all that, I don't believe I will. No, no, Lestrade, you don't want to hold her. Much easier to solve the crime if she's out. Exactly. Inspector Lestrade. that you didn't commit this murder you confessed to. I see. We would, however, like an explanation as to why you confessed to this crime. I prefer not to explain my actions, Inspector. You realize, of course, that your actions are in themselves punishable and that we could detain you. still prefer to make no statement? That is correct. Very well, Lady Bell. You'll be released as soon as the formalities can be cleared. Thank you. Human beings lie to gain, to cover, or to protect. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Please consider me forever in your debt. Not at all. You're in the Foreign Office, aren't you, Lord Beryl? I am. Had you ever met Herr Oberstein before? I had. Exactly when? Last week. For the first time? And the last time. I see. I believe it was his habit to offer large sums of money to men in key positions for the information they may have had in their possession. I believe that was his habit, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Oh, Lord Merrill, while your wife is on her way here, I wonder if I might look at the premises of the crime. Well, of course, of course. It happened in the study. With your permission. My house is yours, sir. Thank you. Oh, 
now. Let me see. Um, Karl Oberstein was lying about, uh, about there. Of course, it's been removed. Uh, yes, yes, of course. I see you've cleaned everything up with your usual remarkable efficiency, Lestrade. Now look here, Holmes. I didn't know there was going to be any mystery about this affair. Oberstein's head was here, Holmes. His feet were there. Thank you, Watson. Where was the gun lying? To the left of the body. Nearer the head or the feet? Nearer the head. Was Oberstein face up or down? Face up. I had to turn him over to examine him. Has there been any effort made to gain forceful entry into the house? Well, none was reported. What? Lord Beryl, do you use glasses when you read? I, uh, yes, I do. These. Are they your only pair? Yes. Who first discovered the body? I believe my secretary. Is he here? Yes. I'll call him. Thank you. Destroyed? Where was Lord Beryl at the time you estimated the crime was committed? He'd been at a meeting with high government officials all day. Oh, good, good. Why did you ask about the glasses, Holmes? It's because Lord Beryl wears glasses when he reads. But Lady Beryl confessed to a crime she didn't commit. What? This is my secretary, Mr. Ross. Uh, you've met Inspector Lestrade and Dr. Watson. Uh, this gentleman is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How do you do? I understand it's through your efforts that Lady Beryl was returning home. Uh, partially through my efforts. I wonder if I could impose upon you, Mr. Ross. Why, of course, sir. Would you mind taking these sheets of paper and roughly outline the position in which you discovered the body? Outline it in scraps of paper. If you would be so kind. Why, of course. What's the purpose of that? How many men have you on the premises, Lestrade? Two outside, why? Good, good. I wonder if you'd mind taking them into the garden behind this window and making a thorough search of the premises for a radius of 30 feet. Looking for what? Anything that doesn't belong in a garden. Are you serious, Holmes? Shh, shh, shh. Completely. Let's got him out of our way. Have you examined your safe, Lord Beryl? I have, Mr. Holmes. All my papers are intact. Excellent, excellent. Does Mr. Ross have the combination to your safe? Yes. There's been no question of robbery. Of course not, Ross. One must ask these questions in an investigation. Of course. Good afternoon, Lady Beryl. Oh, my darling. How are you? I'm all right, George. Quite all right. You must rest. This experience must have been horrible for you. Oh, it's all right. It didn't last long enough to be too difficult. I don't know how, but Holmes has solved the entire thing. Has he really? Not entirely, Lady Beryl. Not yet. Do you expect to? I can only hope to. Mr. Holmes, if there's anything I can do to help. If it would not be too much of an imposition, Lady Beryl, I would like you to retake the position in which Mr. Ross discovered you when he entered the room. Mr. Holmes, my wife has had a harrowing experience. Please consider her nerves at this point. You're forgetting, Lord Beryl, that your wife confessed to a crime she didn't commit. The circumstances are somewhat exceptional. But if Lady Beryl would rather not... I... It's quite all right, George. No, uh, let me see. Uh... I was standing here. Exactly there? I, uh, I believe so. Mr. Ross, are you quite certain that that is the position in which Lady Beryl was standing? 
Well, if you'll pardon my saying so, Lady Beryl, just for the sake of accuracy, you understand, I believe you were standing just a bit further to your left. A little to your left, Lady Beryl. Like that? Yes, I'd say right there. Good. Now, Lady Beryl had a revolver in her hand. Mr. Holmes. That is correct. In which hand? Well, my right hand. Mr. Ross? That's right. Lady Beryl's right hand. Lord Beryl, do you happen to have a revolver in the house? Yes, I have. May I have it? I'm not going to ask my wife to... Yes, I am. If your wife has no objection. Of course she has objections. I have no objections, Mr. Holmes. Ah, excellent. A 38 caliber. Do you notice, Watson, that it's patterned very closely after the Schmidt-Holtz, the revolver in question? Lady Beryl, is that the way you held it? I, uh, I believe so. Mr. Ross? Yes, it was like that. Mr. Ross, I'd like you to think very hard. A great deal depends on what you're going to say now. As far as you can remember, that was the position of Herr Oberstein's body? Yes. And where in relation to Herr Oberstein's body and Lady Beryl were the broken eyeglasses? Over there. There? Yes. Watson, were there any glasses on the floor when you found the body? Absolutely not. You're positive? Positive. That's right. I didn't know what I was saying. There were no glasses on the floor at all. There weren't any glasses on the floor when you found Lady Beryl bending over the body. But there were when you sent Herr Oberstein crashing to the ground. Before you run, Mr. Ross, look at Lady Beryl. I don't understand this, Mr. Holmes. Well, very simple, really. Herr Oberstein approached you with an offer to buy foreign office secrets. You threw him out. Then Ross contacted him, prepared to sell him the secrets. Well, there's nothing missing from the safe. Of course not. If you sold anything, you'd have been found out. Herr Oberstein came here expecting to buy. You opened the safe, showed him the papers he wanted. He put his glasses on to examine them. And then when he paid you, you smashed his skull in. He fell, breaking his glasses. His revolver dropped from his pocket. Then you replaced the papers, pocketed the money and left. It's a lie! Why, you filthy... The unfortunate point occurred when Lady Beryl discovered the body. You read the evidence incorrectly. I thought the gun was my husband. Similar, but not the same. And the glasses. A very common variety of frame. You gathered up the pieces, except a few fragments, and threw the frames away. Yes. Then you lied to protect your husband. Yes. Nina. Brilliant, Holmes. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Watson. Oh, my humble and very grateful thanks, Mr. Holmes. It's been a pleasure to help so brave and noble a woman. I'm still not quite certain what's happened, but I know we shall both be forever indebted to you. It's the whole garden, Holmes. Couldn't find anything but this old pair of glasses. They're broken at that. Really? Mr. Holmes has solved the entire case, Inspector. He has? How? By the little things, Lestrade. The little things that one must remember. The little things that make the difference between success and disaster. One must never forget that the difference between... Good heavens. What? What is it, Holmes? I left the gas on under the experiment. Or Baker Street will be blown up. Holmes, I turned it off!